Now that we have seen the literary structure of Genesis chapter 6 verse 9 through chapter 11 verse 9, we're in a position to ask a second question. Why did Moses write this account of the flood and the resulting new order? What lessons was he teaching the Israelites as they followed him toward the promised land? Needless to say, we can be sure that Moses wrote about Noah's flood and the course of the new order to inform Israel of the facts of this period of primeval history. Yet his record is far too selective and oriented toward particular themes to think that this was all he had in mind. Moses wrote not just to report the past, but to guide Israel in his own day as well. We will unfold Moses' purpose by looking at three portions of Genesis chapter 6 verse 9 through chapter 11 verse 9. First, we will examine the original meaning of the flood narrative. And then we will turn to Moses' record of Noah's sons. And finally, we'll give attention to the original implications of the last portion of the primeval history, the defeat of Babel. Let's look first at the ways Moses related the flood of Noah to the experience of Israel in his day. To discern Moses' use of the flood narrative, we will look at two aspects of the story. First, the connections he established between the flood and the Exodus, and second, the implications of these connections for Israel. Moses established connections between the flood and his own day by portraying Noah in ways that closely resembled his own life and ministry. Now to be sure, the lives of Noah and Moses were different in many ways, and these differences should not be ignored. Yet it's also evident that Moses purposefully depicted Noah so that his Israelite readers would see Noah as a precursor or foreshadowing of Moses. There are at least eight significant connections between Noah and Moses. In the first place, Moses drew a connection between himself and Noah in the motif of violence. You'll recall from Genesis chapter 6 verse 13 that Noah's flood came because the world was filled with violence. As Exodus chapters 1 and 2 make clear, the Egyptians had inflicted much violence on the people of Israel prior to the call of Moses. Moses' deliverance from Egypt came in response to the violence inflicted on the people of Israel. So the work both of Noah and of Moses was to deliver from violence. A second association appears in Moses' use of the term ark. The Hebrew word for Noah's ark throughout Genesis chapters 6 through 9 is teva. Interestingly enough, the only other place where Moses used the term teva was in Exodus chapter 2 verses 3 and 5. There he referred to the basket in which his mother placed him as an ark or a teva. Although Noah's ark was mammoth while Moses' ark was very small, Moses pointed to the fact that both he and Noah had been delivered from watery deaths by means of an ark or teva. In the third place, the importance of divine covenants also establishes Noah as a precursor of Moses. As we have seen, according to Genesis chapter 6 verse 18 and chapter 9 verses 11 through 17, Noah entered into covenant with God on behalf of the entire human race. But of course, we know that one of Moses' primary services to Israel was to mediate a divine covenant. As Exodus chapters 19 through 24 illustrates so well, Moses was chosen to lead the people of Israel into a special covenant with Yahweh as they came to Mount Sinai. The central role of judgment through water also establishes a fourth connection between the two men. In Genesis chapters 6 through 9, God delivered Noah and his family by taking them safely through a flood that destroyed the wicked of the earth. And in much the same way, as Exodus chapters 13 through 15 tell us, Moses brought Israel out of Egypt by passing through the waters of the Red Sea, which waters in turn destroyed the army of the Egyptian oppressors. In the fifth place, God sent wind to drive back the waters in both the days of Noah and the days of Moses. As we have read, according to Genesis chapter 8 verse 1, 
God sent a wind to drive back the waters of Noah's flood. Similarly, according to Exodus chapter 14 verse 21, at the Red Sea, the Lord drove back the sea with a strong east wind. A sixth connection appears in the emphasis put on animals. As Genesis chapter 6 verse 19 tells us, God commanded Noah to bring animals into the ark. On no less than four occasions, the book of Exodus mentions the many animals that left Egypt with the Israelites. Just as God ordained for Noah to bring animals into the world of his day, God also ordained that Moses should bring animals into the Promised Land. Seventh, the theme of divine remembrance also joins Noah and Moses. You will recall that in Genesis chapter 8 verse 1, as the waters raged in the days of Noah, God acted on Noah's behalf because he remembered him. God had made a covenant with Noah that he would bring him safely through the flood, and he remembered that covenant. In much the same way, God declared to Moses that he delivered Israel from Egypt because he remembered his covenant. Listen to what God told Moses in Exodus chapter 6, verse 5. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the Israelites whom the Egyptians are enslaving, and I have remembered my covenant. Divine remembrance played a vital role in the flood and in the Exodus. Finally, the blessing of nature also associates Noah with Moses. Noah brought the human race into a new world where God promised there would be a lasting and stable natural order that would benefit humanity. In a similar fashion, Moses told Israel that in the land of promise, nature would remain constant and beneficial in much the same way. With these connections between Noah and Moses in mind, we are in a position to see the implications of these parallels for the nation of Israel. Why did Moses establish these connections? To grasp the original implications of this material, we must remember that the people of Israel had seriously rebelled against Moses, questioning his authority and the wisdom of his program of exodus and conquest. These challenges to his ministry led Moses to establish connections between himself and Noah. God had used Noah in the flood of deliverance to redeem humanity from horrible primeval violence and to reestablish the human race in a new world of great blessings. And in much the same way, God had chosen Moses to deliver Israel from the horrible violence of Egypt and to bring Israel into a new world of the promised land. Moses' design for Israel was so similar to the flood of Noah that no one could rightly deny it had come from the hand of God.